What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back with some more Space Engineers. There's been a patch and also in my last video I asked, uh, couple, well, I asked a few questions about whether anyone wanted to uh, see anything specific in the upcoming videos and got a couple of questions back so thanks to uh, Jeremy Y and I can't, honestly can't remember the guy who contacted me on Facebook but thank you both for sending in your questions and the most thing that seemed to be intriguing people at least was some of the stuff we've got kicking around in this survival mode and our survival game, how it works, and how you might going about build, go about building some of this stuff for yourself. This is our current uh, Space Engineers survival world uh, that we've been continuing to work on since the recent patch. One of the things we're planning to do is to turn on the meteors, uh, hence the beginnings of our turret defense system to keep those down. And one of the things they did in the patch was give you a bit more control over what you can do with these turrets. If I just run up and access the control panel on here, you can see that unlike before, you actually have some element of control over exactly how they perform and what they do. Uh, beware of the target moving objects. That does include you or anything else the turret sees moving. So once that's on, you have to, it can be quite difficult to get it back off again. But with this, uh, obviously you can build meteor defense and defense against missiles if someone decides to attack your platform. So that's one of the things we're working on. Uh, obviously that needs a lot of work and a lot of materials. Yeah, lots of materials pulling around still. Uh, so going through the various ships we have here, so we might as well start up top uh, with these two. So this consists of uh, a couple of our more recent ships and the purpose is relatively straightforward. This is a very large transport vessel making use of the new connector systems. So basically big funnel on the front, you can fire items at that, huge amount of star storage in the middle and then on the back a way of firing the items back out again using the connectors uh, and the idea is you could combine that ship with a system like that on the edge of your platform to move things between platforms between ships just generally move around as a transport and cargo hauler uh, and the construction of this and the construction of a lot of how I build my ships is relatively similar and they will start off with a sort of box frame that you can just about see the outline of here uh, that goes the entire way around the ship uh, and the same on the top and then I will fill in the insides with whatever I need to do and the reason I do it this way rather than sort of starting with a platform and putting stuff on top of it for example is it means that you can then build your cargo containers and all of your conveyor system buried right inside the ship so all these cargo containers are connected together and so is the uh, emitters and collectors on either end but without needing to use barely any um, conveyors as you can see I mean, you look around there, there there are no pipes you can't see any pipes and that's because they're all directly connected together so it keeps the ship design nice and simple gives you loads of room to put your thrusters on loads of room to find space for your generators and your reactors and the end result of the ship that performs quite well uh, because the center of gravity is all so well sorted and you won't need too many gyros on it therefore to keep it stable I think this has got four and I'm pretty sure that's more than we need uh, and then starting off this with one of our most successful mining ship designs, uh, not the first, obviously we have some very very basic mining ships kicking around up there, but uh, and that was our very first ship that has been hideously mutated into something with far too many drills on it and never originally had any of this planned, hence it's kind of all built off a big slab. What keeps breaking that square? That was broken in my last video as well. Anyway, back up to the miner. So this is, again, based off that kind of framework design. It was a box which everything was built around, except I didn't feel the need to fill in all the sides on it so that I could still get in and work on any internal components. So I kind of just left two sides off. But if I get in this one and fly it to show you how it mines, and this is where I need to turn off the landing gear, need to turn off the dampers, reactors on, and then take off very very slowly so as not to damage the floor because the landing feet are tucked right in there and the point behind that now we're off we can move on out the point behind the uh, the, the feet being tucked right in there is that we, this is capable of mining both in a tunnel but also not in a tunnel if you understand what I mean so you come in and you can mine quite happily in a straight line let's get my mining tool out so it's quite decent at mining in a straight line in front of it. We'll do a good job of collecting all the materials that's coming out. It has a connector on the front in between all the drills to try and capture everything it can. So you can see tucked in there. That should try and capture anything that's not picked up by the, uh, the drills around the side. But as well as being able to mine reasonably effectively just straight into the asteroid and hide within its own footprint, um, it is also quite good at kind of strip mining off the surface. So you use these bottom three and at any point you have the ability to strip mine off any of the sides. They're all in this triangle, 
sort of formation so that you've got three flat edges to work with. Uh, one of the things that's annoyed me the most when mining asteroids is leaving like, really rugged terrain behind that then becomes really annoying to deal with with any of your mining craft. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to spend too long demoing exactly how this works. The, the point is more in its construction. So without being too lazy about things, let's just leave it there. So the main thing you need to worry about when you're dealing with a mining vessel is going to be the drills and the layout of the drills on the front. These have been positioned so that they aren't ever touching each other and it's very easy to position them so that they accidentally collide. So if I go in there you can see that those in theory are very 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 close to each other but with a bit of experimentation you get them to the point where they aren't actually touching. The other thing of course is these front thrusters need to be buried really far back so that you're not damaging anything on the ship with them. Uh, but you've got to leave space for them to be buried really far back. So that kind of takes a bit of experimentation and the best bet with the mining craft is to get an idea and start with how you want the drills laid off on the front and how you want exactly these laid out and then you can worry about the remaining design of the ship as you go forward. Uh, and again, I mean, this was a very simple one where you had this framework and I was able to include all of the conveyors that connected everything sort of on the back of the cockpit pretty much. Uh, and then on the bottom down here is where we can ditch all our ore if we wish and if I was to turn all of those on at the same time it lags the server like you would not believe it does not like that one bit have we got anything that's nothing actually in us so that's the mining vessel and obviously there is another mining vessel that is very very similar to this over here uh, we have that don't even ask about that uh, it's dangerous does not get, does not leave the platform. Um, has a habit of explosively decompressing itself. In theory, it was supposed to be uh, essentially a cargo unit on the bottom with a cockpit that could fly it around some feet to lock the two bits on top in place. And then they are both on motors with gyros, so it had the sort of two ranges of movement. And by setting up the motors with a certain level of force, it was supposed to be able to automatically mine for us. And the top bit would spin around in circles on the rotor with a set force. This would push down with a set force. The drills would drill, and then everything would drop out of the top section into these collectors around here and into the big cargo containers underneath. However, um, end result is it is hideously unstable and the top bit has a habit of pinging off into space and then I have to remake the whole thing again. So we don't use that anymore. Uh, around here were various concepts for our cargo carrier design. So we quickly worked out that we'd want something to move cargo uh, containers around with us so that we could always have a decent amount of cargo in them and this was all prior to them introducing the connectors and the conveyors thing so we were trying to find various ways of um, holding a cargo container with feet that could be dropped off and picked up and so on uh, or eventually I think down here we ended up with one that was just was a cargo container yep yeah, there we go um, they kind of work uh, the thing you've got to be careful with especially with ones like this one here which is quite large is while you think you may be able to move some quite large stuff with it um, why is there a drill on top of it? <laughs> okay, well you think you might be able to move some quite large stuff with it, those feet break off really really easily. So you can move sort of other small ships and sort of some cargo containers around with them as long as there's not too much in the cargo container. But if you try, if I was to try and move that platform there, unlock it and try and move it around with this for example, I wouldn't stand a chance, it would just snap the front end off. So I think we're going to need to move these onto being large ships eventually, it's just quite resource hungry when you're playing on survival. And of course this whole world, everything here was built on survival, so we've been mining our mats with our mining craft. Um, processing them down in this arrangement down here and the way we had this and the uh, big room that I'll show you in a second set up is obviously it's all connected together so there's loads and loads and loads of stuff in there um, but it's all set up so that the refineries and the assemblers are connected together and it's all connected underneath so hanging off the bottom of our platform we have all of our conveyors our connectors we haven't got around to breaking down the ugly conveyor corners and putting on proper corners yet we will do so don't worry Another thing they added into the patch is you no longer need these conveyor corners and you can see the mats used for those are quite a lot and now you can build these things on the corners and nothing like as many mats which is going to be real helpful for under this thing because this thing is our recycler and arguably is a bit of a mess. It was even more of a mess when with design one which had the, um, had the collectors in the floor. So the way this thing works and the easiest way to demonstrate is by turning off my uh, jetpack so the gravity in here is totally messed up. Um, there's an extra generator on the back of this wall behind these collectors which has been set to the correct width so that 
as you get out of this room, your gravity goes back to normal. But anything in this room is affected by it, and the idea being that you keep doing that, come in here and you fly these whatever you need to uh, dis deconstruct into this room. And of late, we've had a lot of people joining, coming and playing with us on multiplayer. So these horrible starting ships are floating everywhere. So we decided to do something about it and actually uh, break them down into useful materials. Uh, so this is what this machine is for. And the idea being that you fill yourself up. So my volume should be 1200 at max. Almost there. Okay, and then as soon as your inventory is full, items of course fall to the floor. And in this room, those items will be affected by the funny gravity, and as they fall to the floor, so come on, come on, as they fall to the floor, they're going to get pulled sideways, and they get pulled sideways onto the floor, slide across it, and into the collectors. And it means that with a big ship like this, there's no running backwards and forwards, taking ages, carrying mats around and so on. You just fill yourself up, and everything that ends up on the floor in this room goes into two large cargo containers underneath. There's a potential that we could. Um, start doing this with the large ship grinders that they introduced as well, but in my experience that doesn't actually work quite as well as you'd think it does. Um, they have a habit of pushing the ships around and that makes them really unstable. Um, so it means that you kind of... you have The first time I tried it I ended up with one of these yellow ships headed this way out of the hangar uh, towards all of this stuff and I had to grab one of our ships really super quick and kind of nudge it back in before it destroyed most of what we've been working for. Now. As you, some of the more astute might have noticed, the design isn't perfect. The tubes occasionally get caught on the corners, which we've sloped off to try and make sure they don't. that doesn't happen. But uh, unfortunately, sometimes it does. So they're going down, that tube will be fine, but this one here gets caught on the corner. Fortunately, with the gravity as it is, all you need to do is go and sort of nudge them a little bit and they move around. And that will go into the tube and we'll be fine. There you go. And then when you're done taking it apart, into your inventory, you go, oh, I don't need any of this stuff, let's just drop it all on the floor. There you go, and off it goes into the collectors using the funky gravity. And We can, obviously we've got a control station up here to turn the gravity off and so on if you need to, or swizzle it around, sometimes if items get stuck you can just turn the gravity field backwards and then put it back on again and it pulls things down there. But we found the, um, the diagonal route meant they didn't really matter which way the items fell, fell, they were going to end up in these connectors somehow. And then if I just access the storage here, if I go underneath to the large car containers right at the end, there you go. And you can see the mats just fall straight into them, that's one of two I believe that are down there. Yeah, and there's, I mean you can see quite how many materials we're ending up getting out of that, which on survival is really good, you don't want to be wasting any of the materials. So, see, we've done the lifters, we've done the horrible automated mining rig that doesn't work. Don't even ask about that. Some of my friends have big ideas and not a huge amount of sense behind them. Uh, it does nothing. It's just huge and used a huge amount of resources. Uh, yes, there's a little bit of RP. Of course there is. So, yes, we have a med bay. Um, we have a tower that's going to have some turrets on the top and so on. I mean, we're not big into that, but you might as well make it look nice. Why not? And finally, and the last bit I'll show you, because this is relevant to the patch that came out recently, um, obviously the main thing they changed was the turrets and what you can do with these turrets, and they added in rocket turrets as well, but given that these were for, missile de uh, for meteor defence, uh, and missile turrets are not very good at meteor defence, we put machine gun turrets up, and there will be more going up probably on here, along with a big actual defence turret, because they've put turrets onto the ships up there. So... I don't think this actually has any ammo in it, but that doesn't matter. The whole point is to go and demonstrate what's possible. Before, these um, random craft that fly around if you have cargo ships turned on were a little bit broken, really. There was very little to prevent you from just say, uh, flying over to one of them and then grabbing all the materials on it, flying it back, and there was no reason for survival. Uh, since the latest patch, however, They've gone and remade a lot of them, and in fact I'm heading for a private sale, and I know from experience, a private sale is not one to demonstrate what I want. Wow, that's laggy. Something on our platform, apparently, is not very good for FPS. 
All right, what I'm going to have to do is cut to some different footage because it looks like I'm going to have to sit around here and wait for the right type of ship to come in. The private sailed a tiny little uh, merchant vessels. They have very little on them. Uh, they're only really any use for grabbing some solar panels. So welcome back. Uh, it did take a little while for me to find what I was looking for, or for one of them to spawn, and as you can probably tell, I spent that time productively by putting ammo in my guns and painting it green. Important. Um, so yeah, one thing they've added in the recent patch, which was those turrets, they've also added to the cargo ships that are flying around, which means that these in survival are no longer just a freebie, but actually something that, firstly, as I've demonstrated by taking an hour for me to get to this point, you need to catch when they're available, but secondly, they also fight back. So here we go, let's get in there. It's worth mentioning that this is a, um, a backup save of mine, so it's not, I'm not gonna die in this and then screw this ship over. Although I hope, as you can see by the heavy armor on the front, that it's actually doing what it's supposed to do. Oh, not quite enough. So there you go. That was what I wanted to demonstrate. Those commercial freighters are no longer quite what you thought they were. So, yeah, I think I'll call it there, but it was a nice demonstration of how survival is coming along really well, and if you add in the addition of the meteor showers too, there's a few things now that can actually kill you, and I really hope that the next patch that we see will be the patch that contains the ability to say which team you're on, basically, and then those turrets and the freighters and everything is going to come into its own. There's even a map specifically designed for, as they say, competitive play. What they mean by that, I don't know, but what I see there is hide your base, they're coming for you. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching guys, this has been a somewhat laggy Space Engineers, and I will see you next time. Woo!